Hello and welcome to the 13th video in this series programming Simple Floppy Robin for Android using Cocos 2DX. So, state of the application, if I run it quickly, just a quick reminder is we have a score and our best score, but that's not being saved. I said in the last video, we'll deal with that inside Android because that'll be a good excuse to use the inter C++ and Java, the JNI. And when we crash here, our other Robin stops with a sort of OK collision detection on a tube, scoring's working, and we press the Robin to start again. It's got lots of problems, of course. Uh, we can't really see the white labels very well. When it's over, if we click on the Robin straight after a crash, the game restarts with no pause or anything, which is, isn't such a good effect. If I just crash into this tube at the top here, assuming I can maintain the Robin, and, and click quickly, it starts again. It doesn't look so good. So I thought it might be good, actually, when this happens, a crash, to actually put up a good a game over label with the score that's been achieved and that the user can't actually click anything for a couple of seconds then the label disappears and the robin automatically gets put back into its start position and the game can start again. So let's have a look at doing all that. It sounds a lot but it's actually probably the easiest video we've had for a while. The first thing we're going to do is the score label here. We're going to make the text of this this red because it's it's not looking very good in um, in white. So let's just do CC red here like so. So it allows you to set some Cocos 2D uh, color objects and they've already specified some for you in standard colors. Red will do. Oops. I'll just run the uh, the application now with the red labels and you see that looks a little bit on the top left better now. We can at least read the scores whilst they're on top of, of the clouds anyway. Good. Okay. So now let's think about this game over label. The first thing we need to do is create it. So we will create it. And I'll call it uh, game over. And hit caps lock. As sometimes happens. And then back into hello world, scene.cpp. And let's just take this code here for the score label. Now, I will say now, there's some duplication obviously of code that's gone on here in the sections. Um, when I'm writing my own games, I have a library with those games that does various things like print coordinates to the screen when you just send the coordinate rather than using compl uh, complicated log statements and also adds text to labels and things and, and various stuff to layers automatically so there's no code repetition but it's a, a quick tutorial I want to keep the files to a minimum and it's not so bad here so yes there's a bit of repetition sorry about that if you don't like it but um, hey ho that's the way it is so we'll have game over here uh, I want to change the font size of this so We'll make it a game over font size. And 32, so I should be able then to say game over font size. The anchor point, it doesn't need anything special. Its position, it's going to be set in the middle of the screen. So I'll just copy that from the background sprite here. I'm going relatively quickly here because you've seen all this before. Colour set to red, and we'll add it as a child with the same Z index as the Robin because it will appear over the top of the Robin, of course, because we're adding it to the layer after the Robin has already been added. Last thing I want to do though is we don't want to see this label unless the, it's actually game over, so we'll set vi vis um, visible to false for now. Okay, so that's the first thing done. We get our label and inside our game over here, what we can do now is we can just say the game over label and set visible to uh, true, like so. And what we could say then is when we start the game is that we set visible to false. Like so. So if I now just run the application and start playing the game and let the robin die, we get game over. As soon as I click on the robin it disappears, but it's still not so good because if the robin dies and I click then we don't really see anything appearing and certainly when we get around to adding the score to that, it's not going to look very good when I do that. So we need to force a delay in there somehow. So the way we'll do this is, is inside the game over here, once we've set the, well at the start of the game over actually, the first thing we'll do is we'll call this and set touches in a, touch enabled and say false. So we'll stop detecting any more touches. And now what I want to do is I want that label to sit there visible for at least, say, two and a half seconds. So what we'll do then is we'll call another function 
that then after two and a half seconds is called to set touch is being enabled again and to remove this label or to make it invisible and we'll call this function we'll go up into the header file and we'll call this re-enable after game over I'll just make that a small e and just copy that and go down into the implementation file and void and hello world and we want this function to be called then it's going to build there and see where it's given me an error and it hasn't good okay we want this function to be called then after the two seconds and when it is first of all we want touch to be enabled we want the game over label to be hidden so visibility set to false and actually one nice thing really would be to take the setting of the robin's position out of here and actually have the robin go back as well once this has happened so the only thing that remains actually is to call this label after the set amount of time so we'll say this and we can say schedule once and now we need to simply say a schedule selectors which is simply what function are we calling in this class and we want to call the re-enable after game over and simply now in seconds give the delay let's give two and a half seconds like so and that's all we actually need to do so now when we have game over the label will be shown and after two and a half seconds it'll disappear and we can start the game again so let's have a look at how that works and I've got this Xcode problem again where the application is pausing for a while before actually starting I'm sorry about this come on good okay so now we're up and running and let's crash into a tube and now I've crashed and I'm clicking everywhere and nothing's happening and after two and a half seconds the robins reset to the middle and we can restart the game so that's a lot better way of doing things game over things sit there as they were and now the game restarts one more thing however we can add to this is we've got this update scores label let's all so update the game over label so what we'll do is it's again a bit of code repetition but it doesn't matter game over label update game over label we'll take this in and drop it inside hello world scene and that's where's the score label just drop that inside here take hello world and again if you're writing your own games, particularly bigger games, you'd probably want a library that allows you to add strings to labels with some arguments sent into the font and the string, etc., rather than doing it this way. Um, I'll call this uh, game over string. And game over string. And this time we just want to set the game over label. And we'll set this to game over. You scored. double exclamation mark why not okay so that's all we need to do there and the only thing we need to do then obviously is call the update on the game over label which we'll do just before calling game over so if I run the application now we should be in a much better situation again there's a delay with the application appearing maybe it's because the recording software is also running I don't know come on good it's there let's actually try and score a point using my skill I can't score but anyway we've got game over and you scored zero appearing there for two and a half seconds as you saw now the debate remains open obviously as to the best way whether you want this staying there until the user presses the robin or the user indeed just presses the screen to restart the game um, I'll leave it like this is for now but another variation may be that it doesn't receive touches but that game over stays there until the user has decided to restart um, maybe it's a little better doing like that I don't know but for now that will suffice for the state it's in so the game actually in sort of this is, is now in a pretty much a playable state it's keeping score and the end of the game is sort of okay and the question is now of course what's remaining before we switch over to Eclipse and actually putting all this into Android and then adding in the Android play services and advertising and things like that all on top of it well there's good news and bad news the good news is we've got 
to add some sound, which is very easy, we'll, be, we'll need to write a game manager class, so a singleton that manages, because to set the sound in Cocos 2D X 2.2.1, I think every version before version 3, the new one, which is still in beta, um, you can't, the volume won't change with the hardware buttons on an Android device, so you need to have some kind of ability for the user to set the volume up, up higher or lower. So we'll do that for music and effects, and that means that we'll need um, a separate screen for that. And we might as well then, if we're going to have a separate screen for that, do a separate screen for a splash screen as well. Why not? And for this we'll use a Game Manager class. That's the good news. That's not too difficult. The bad news is we've still got to do the scaling and stuff required to deal with multiple resolutions. And that's a little bit more involved. It's not too bad, but it's a bit more involved and it can sometimes be a bit tricky and maybe there'll be the odd error there. I don't know. So that's it then for this video. And like I said, two or three more videos and then we're ready to jump into the joy of Eclipse and Android. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.